how do you get an image at night without getting a lot of noise? Well, first you need to understand where the noise comes from. And noise in your footage basically comes from bumping up your ISO. So what ISO is, is basically how sensitive your sensor is to light. And the more you bump up your ISO, the more sensitive it is to light. Basically, it takes less light to make an image. So when you're thinking about exposure, there's three things that affect it. Your shutter speed, your aperture, and your ISO. So it makes sense if you have a dark image that you would just bump up your ISO because it can go up to 10,000, 25,000. You know, these cameras nowadays can really bump up the ISO, but then you get really, really noisy images. Unless you're shooting on something like the A7S or the A7S II, most of the time when you start bumping up and you get to these higher ISOs, you're gonna get a very noisy image. And so there's ways that you can actually use your camera so you don't get noisy because most of us aren't shooting on these cameras that can just suck in the light. It's a very special, unique camera and there's a lot of other cameras out there and we need to be able to shoot at night. So the first thing is to avoid noise is don't shoot above your base ISO. So every camera has a base. And so once you start going above that base, you're introducing more noise into your image. So with the GH5, you don't wanna go above 800 ISO. A lot of cameras, 800's kind of like where you wanna stop at. So I would say stick it at 800, do not go above that. So that's the first thing. Everything else that we do with the camera is going to allow us to bring more light into the sensor, but not affect the actual ISO, so you're not gonna introduce more noise. So if you're looking at the exposure triangle, the next is shutter. And if you're thinking about shutter, you don't wanna go above 1 60th if you're shooting at 30 frames a second, or 1 48th if you're shooting in 24 frames a second. And this is because as soon as you bump above that, you're not going to have the motion blur that looks cinematic. Also, the higher you go in your shutter speed, the darker your image is gonna get. So you'd ask, well, why don't I open it up more to 1 30th? Well, when you start reducing your shutter and making it slower, you're introducing more motion blur. So when you have an image that you're shooting at 1 30th at 30 frames a second, and you move the camera fast, or you have something fast moving in the frame, you're going to introduce a lot of motion blur, and it's not gonna look very good. So you wanna stay at that shutter speed that makes sense to get a cinematic image, which is double that of your frame rate. Now, if you do have a situation where there's not a lot of movement, you can bump up your shutter and go at like a 1 30th or 1 24th, depending on what you're shooting at, and you'll be able to get a good image and not see a lot of that motion blur. It just depends on the subject that you're shooting, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so let's talk about the third piece of the exposure triangle, and that is aperture. And the key with this is using those lenses that have a wider aperture, and those are primes. So if you don't shoot on a lot of primes, then you're using lenses that have slower apertures, so it takes more light to expose your image, which makes you bump up the ISO. Personally, I love using primes because it not only allows you to get more light, it gives you a shallower depth of field, and it also forces you to think about what it is that you're shooting a little bit more. You have to go through that thought process of, oh, I need a 35 for this, I need a 50 for this, I need an 85 for this. Instead of just putting on a zoom and then just moving the zoom back and forth to get your shot, you actually have to put a little more thought into it. So a side note, as filmmakers, using primes makes us focus more on what it is that we're shooting, and we actually become better filmmakers because there's more of a thought process that goes into getting each of the shots. However, when it comes to exposure, using primes gives you that wide open aperture. For example, with the GH5, I use lenses that go as wide as a 1.2, and there's some Voglanders out there that get a 0.95, and that will give you a ton of light compared to your zoom lens that only opens up to say a 2.8 or a 4. So prime lenses are key. Okay, so those are the settings that you're gonna to wanna to use for a camera. You're gonna to wanna to keep your ISO at, at its base, you're gonna, not gonna to wanna to go above double that of your shutter speed, and you're gonna to wanna to find lenses that open up super wide, getting down to a 1.2, 0.95. Whatever camera system you're using, you're gonna to wanna to find the widest aperture lenses for that, okay? And then with that, you'll be able to get some awesome footage. However, you still can't shoot in like pitch black. That, that's just not something you're gonna be able to do unless you have one of these crazy cameras that can shoot in dark. But that's, that's a different thing entirely. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is when you're shooting at night, you're gonna to wanna to find areas that have some light. And so when you find these areas that have light, you'll be able to get an exposure using these settings. And so you gotta play with the light, play with how the light is hitting your subject, and then you can get some really cool footage. If there's little to no lighting in the places that you're shooting, you're still not gonna get much of an image. And you might say, well, what if I just bring it up in post? Well, when you start introducing color grading and you start introducing more exposure in post, you're just gonna bring up the noise level and then your footage is gonna get super noisy. 